You can bake it, boil it, smash it, hash it, roast it or fry it. The potato is versatile and vastly loved. It was first domesticated about 10,000 years ago and today it is one of the most important crops in the world. More than 350 million tons of potatoes are produced every year. Yet we have known so little about the mighty potato. We did not know how it originated, that is, until now. Now a new study is out. Scientists say potatoes came from tomatoes. You heard that right. Potatoes evolved from tomatoes more than 9 million years ago. How is that even possible? Our next report tells you. The spudtacular potato is the starch of cuisines everywhere. Pardon the pun, but more than 350 million tons of it are produced globally every year. Then it is baked, boiled, mashed, smashed, hashed, fried, and eaten by more than a billion people the world over. Safe to say, everybody wants a bite of the potato. But where did it come from? Apparently, from a tomato. Potatoes were first domesticated about 10,000 years ago in the Andes Mountains. Soon, they traveled across the world and became wildly popular. But their origins remained obscure. Plants don't preserve well. The fossil records that existed weren't good enough. And nobody could really say where the modern-day potato came from. But scientists can finally answer this. A new study is out. It says that potato is the child of tomato. And there is another parent in the mix, a tuberosum, which is a group of potato-like plants from South America. Apparently, potatoes were born 9 million years ago through the combining of genetic material from a tuberosum and wild tomato plants. But this is quite strange, to say the least. Scientists have known a few things for a while now. First, that modern potato plants closely resemble a tuberosum. But there is a key difference. Tubers. These are thickened underground parts of a stem. Think of them as nutrient storage organs of plants. A tuberosum plants do not have tubers, while the potatoes we consume are tubers. The second bit that scientists have known is this. Potatoes are genetically related to tomatoes, but they look nothing alike. So why is it that potatoes resemble one plant, but share their genes with another? To solve this mystery, scientists analyzed several lineages of potatoes, and they found a mixed ancestry. They realized that potatoes are hybrids of a tuberosum and tomato. Individually, neither of the potato's parents could form the underground nutrient storage organs. But together, they gave birth to the potato plant's distinctive feature, the tuber, which is edible. And this is a radical feat. If you look at the annals of evolutionary history, you will find many ill-fated interspecies pairings. Sure, different crops are often bred together. This can come with many benefits, like stronger yield. But mixing genes and making new combinations is a risky gamble. Many plants and animals cannot reproduce outside their own species. And when they do, their offsprings have to pay the price for it. The most common example of this is liger cubs, the offspring of lions and tigers. They suffer from major health problems, like heart failure. And the males are almost always infertile. So for decades now, biologists have seen hybridization of two entirely different species as a rarely successful force. But the potato didn't just survive it. It carved its own path, albeit underground, with tubers. It has revolutionized our understanding of evolution and given fries with ketchup a whole new meaning. 